Greetings and welcome. We are in Junior English and working with a set of lines by Emily Dickinson on page 416 of your hymnal. There is a solitude of space. Dickinson will sometimes provide us with the most remarkable little insight in just a few lines that will lead us to go, oh man, she says that so remarkably well. This is going to be a poem about the difference between being alone and being lonely. Let's go ahead and put it in our notes real quickly. Dickinson spends much of her adult life alone. She doesn't have a lot of people around her. She likes to be by herself. Does that mean she's lonely? Well, I don't know. Let's take a look at this poem and identify maybe what her view is of being alone. Let's read it together, 416. There is a solitude of space, a solitude of sea, a solitude of death. But these societies shall be compared with that profounder sight, that polar privacy, a soul admitted to itself, finite, infinite. Now, I've had students that say, this is a classic example of why I struggle to read, and especially poems, and especially Emily Dickinson poems. I mean, the words I pretty much understand, but when you put them one right after the other this way, I have a tendency to kind of go, whoa, 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 what did she just say? Let's take a look and see if we can maybe exegete quickly. What is it that she says? Well, I've had students who actually say this is the coolest poem I've ever taught. No kidding. It has an interesting message to it, and they really like that final line. Finite, limited, infinity goes on forever. What is she talking about? It all is contained in the word solitude. Let's write that word down and let's define that word in our own words. Solitude. What does the word solitude mean? We live, of course, in a place where I believe there is a lake named solitude. You can drive right to it and get out and go fishing at it, right? No. Those of you who know about Lake Solitude, no. It's going to be a long, long, what? Walk, unless you're riding on a pony, because no motorized vehicles allowed close to Lake Solitude. Long ways back. And for those of you that have carried some heavy pack so that you can go back in there, let's just say it this way, you sleep pretty well at night. Why? Solitude. Far away and all alone. Far away and all alone. Solitude. But notice for her, there is a solitude of space, a solitude of sea, a solitude of death. But these societies shall be compared with that profounder sight, that polar privacy, solitude, privacy. Now it's interesting. There are students who will say, on a Friday night, if they're sitting in their room and they've got absolutely nothing to do, two groups of students. One group of students goes, seriously? I'm a total loser. I've got nobody to, i got to call somebody. I'm definitely calling. I'm definitely calling. I'm texting. i got to do something. i got to do something. I gotta... There's a second group of students who say it out loud when they realize they are totally alone for the entire Friday night, and they go, yes, finally, yes, all alone. Now, it's interesting that the two groups of students often do not understand each other. The student, for example, who says, if I'm alone on a Friday night, I have to go find somebody to be with. I feel sad for you that you're all by yourself alone. And the other student will say, I feel sad for you that you've always got to have somebody there with you all the time. I love privacy. Of course, privacy coming from our word private. That is to be left alone. It's an interesting 3B question, and we'll come back to it. Do you think these kinds of people are born or made? And what kind of student are you? And what kind of person are you? Are you an individual that enjoys privacy? Right? So, for example, there are students who will take their phone and will say, the best button on the phone is the off button. They turn it off, and they can leave it off for days. And somebody will say to them, 
dude, your phone, I tried to call you. It's like, oh, uh, yeah, sorry, I turned it off. I forgot to turn it back on. You forgot to turn it back on? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 didn't, I didn't want to be bothered with the phone. There are students who actually will say, yeah, I don't have a phone. I don't even need a phone. I don't want a phone. I actually had a mother that told me about her daughter. She's like, my daughter doesn't want a phone. Is there something wrong with her? Emily Dickinson would say, no, she understands the beauty of solitude. Notice, space, C. By the way, notice all the S sounds. These are what we call hard siblings. S which works kind of nicely with the word solitude, doesn't it, right? Of course, that S sound, right? Lends itself to a certain kind of quiet, subdued kind of feeling. Notice the second to the last line. A soul admitted to itself. Now that's an interesting one. A soul admitted to itself. So for example, you, uh, somebody famous you're going to meet, you're sitting out in the outside room or you're going to go to the doctor, you sit in the waiting room and then all of a sudden somebody comes out and says, okay, you're ready to be admitted. You're going to meet this person, the doctor, whoever. So you get up and you walk through the door and now you are admitted to the person, the doctor, whoever, right? You understand that word picture. How can you be admitted to yourself? Whoa. See, like I said, I had students that say, now that is a cool concept. How can you, how can you meet yourself? Of course, the most obvious answer is, you look in a mirror, huh? Right? So there you are. Oh, there I am. Right? But notice, she's talking about the soul. How do you meet yourself? How do you meet your soul? Which is a really interesting question. It is the Thoreau question, isn't it, of who are you anyway? And is it possible, do you think? to live on this planet 17 years and to have never met yourself. Oh, you know all about the people you live with. You know all about the friends who are around you. But if somebody were to ask you to talk about yourself, yeah, I don't know myself very well. Maybe Dickinson would say, you haven't spent enough time with yourself. Sometimes privacy, solitude, is a powerful, powerful experience. Notice, it's finite in its infinity. Paradox, let's put it in 2B. Paradox. Finite means limited. Infinity means eternal. Which is a fascinating way to think about being alone. Let's jump to 3A real quickly. The famous writer Joseph Conrad in his classic Heart of Darkness said it this way. This is a line one or two of my students have written down. And they really like this line. It troubles them, but they like it. The line runs like this. We live as we dream alone. We live as we dream alone. Because you can live your whole life around people, but Dickinson will point this out even in this poem. When you come to that final moment, five, four, three, two, and then you're going to flatline, dude, you are all A-L-O-N-E. Nobody else can do that project with you. You can have lots of people there, but once you flatline, we live as we dream. Well, that is to say, spend some time with yourself alone, so that you can actually know who you are. Have you changed since fifth grade? Well, all you got to do is look at an old fifth grade picture to go, yeah, but have you changed since fifth grade? You, who you are. How are you changing as the days go by, as you get older? To what degree are you maturing? And are you aware of that maturing process? Dickinson will invite you to say, enjoy a little bit of solitude. Let's jump to 3A real quickly. What's your favorite movie about a person all alone? What's your favorite movie about a person who has to come to terms with being alone? 
maybe even talking out loud to himself or herself in a process of trying to come to terms with solitude. What is your favorite film about solitude? Do you like those nature films, for example, when those planes fly over, maybe like Alaska, and as far as the eye can see, nothing but white and ice? Or maybe you like pictures of mountains. Why do you like those empty spaces? Are you attracted to solitude? Or does it kind of frighten you a bit? What are your thoughts about solitude at 3B? When was the last time you were completely 100% alone? By that I mean no music, no internet, no phone. And what kind of an experience would it be for you to shut off your phone for an entire week? To shut it off, what would that be for you? Would that be a good idea or would that be a rotten idea for you? Well, there you go. An introduction to there's a solitude of space and Dickinson's ideas of privacy.